this octagonal towering structure now in a vestige of Jahanpana which was one of the seven medieval cities of Delhi is a fascinating monument Adab I am Swalya Malik a third year history undergraduate student of Miranda House being a Delhiite and a history buff I consider that Delhi is more than the red fort Subdarjan tomb and Sukhi Darbar and today I am exploring one of the most complicated monument of this world the Vijay Mandir and you know what is the saddest part of this monument that just like the lost stanza of the classic poem the history of this monument is completely lost and this is the story of Vijay Mandir let's have a look Vijay Mandir is believed to be commissioned by Muhammad bin Tughlaq in 1326 to 1327 however historians were unable to trace a concrete source timeline and context due to the numerous alterations that this monument witnessed the only reference we find to this monument is through the great moroccan traveler ibn battuta's account of rihla who came to india in the 14th century There are also debates regarding the patronage of this monument. Some historians believe that it was originally constructed by Alauddin Khilji and later major additions were done by Muhammad bin Tughlaq. The structure that is visible today is built on a slightly raised area with a higher platform on top of it. This platform has several doors that possibly lead into a hall. The whole structure is on octagonal plane built on the rebel masonry. The raised platform or chabutra was probably Diwan-e Khas of the palace where Muhammad bin Tughlaq would meet his close advisers. There is also Diwan-e Aam which may have been called Hazar Sutun or Hall of Thousand Pillars which probably extended over two floors. Some Architecture scholars believe that Vijay Mandal was probably the Hazar Sutun or that this thousand pillar hall was a part of Vijay Mandal pavilion under Muhammad bin Tughlaq where he administrated the empire. Ibn Battuta in his account says Sultan Muhammad's palace had three gates each furnished with a flurry of officials presided over by the marshals in the capes of gold plumed with a peacock feather. The first gate was also home to the executioners. The second led into the large mashwar or the audience chamber. The third door opens into the immense and the vast hall called Hazar Ustun, which means a thousand pillars. The pillars are of painted wood and support a wooden roof, most exquisitely carved, and it is the hall that Sultan sets for the public audience. It was also possibly used as an observation tower to monitor the troops. These pillars were made out of wood, which is why today we can see only the holes in the ground where these pillars would have been pegged. Historians conjecture that the octagonal building with alternate shorter and wider edges is a culmination of essentially aesthetic Tughlaq architecture. There is also a dargah nearby of Sufi saint Sheikh Hasan Tahir who lived during the reign of Sikandar Lodi in the 1500s however the present situation of this monument is saddening today this place mostly visited by the stray dogs imbibers and misguided young boys lost in the bustling lanes of delhi this important piece of history is lying in the state of disrepair